Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, today I'm gonna be talking about the topic about multicollinearity, right? Um, so multicollinearity. So I just want to make sure that you know what, you know what, you, know what uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. So we're talking about the topic of multicollinearity. Uh, so once again, we're going to start in terms of the assumptions of regression. So if you guys haven't don't know what are the assumptions of regression, I'm going to recap it. But there's a video that talks a bit detail about it. Uh, so here's what it is. Uh, the first one is in terms of uh, the relationship between the dependent and independent variables should be linear, which means that y and x-axis should be like this, should not be like this, right? Should be like this. Uh, second is, you know what, the error terms should not have a pattern, right? So when you talk about uh, linear regression, right? So linear is linear in nature, right? Linear, not like this. Error term should should not have a pattern. So what do we mean? We mean that hey, you know what? Uh, if the error terms are like this, right? Versus if you have say uh, it has a pattern like this. Right, so this is homoscedasticity, this is hetero. So we want this, we do not want this. Uh, the next that we talk about in terms of the regression, right? Uh, the number third we talk about is, once again, the error terms uh, should not be serially correlated which means if there's a error term could be you know what could be like this like this like this and so on verse if you have say something like this right so now you actually have a pattern once again this is no good we want this uh, so when you talk about uh, multicollinearity Right. So this is going to happen in terms of uh, multiple regression situation. Right. So when you talk about, uh, let me just use a different one on here. All right. So when you talk about uh, a regular or a simple regression, uh, what is simple regression? Is y equals b0 plus b1x plus the error term. This is a regular simple like regression. Now, what if there is a multiple regression? A multiple regression is going to be y equals uh, b naught. My apologies. Plus b one x plus b two x two. Right. So this is what it really is. It's multiple uh, coefficients. Hence, you have so called the multiple linear regression. Now, when we have multiple linear regression. Uh, that's kind of an issue as well, because uh, you want to take a look at, you know what, uh, because there's different variables out here, there's x1, there's x2, there's x3, and so on, uh, are these correlated, right? If they if these are really correlated, which means you know, we might not actually need the other one, right? Let's say, you know what, you have x1 and x2 are, let's say, are correlated, and let's say the correlation that we have is one, which means if, so what it means if X1 goes up by say 10, 10 bucks. So maybe X2 goes up by 10 bucks as well. So if you have something which has a high correlation, then hey, you know what, why do we need an X2? Or why do we need an X1? We can just have either X1 or we can have X2, right? So there's no point in having two stuff, right? If, they're, if they have a high positive correlation. Uh, we wanna have variables which have low correlation and hence, these x1 or x2, if they have local relations, then you know what? Then they might actually be able to help us forecast y. If x1 and x2 are doing the exactly the same thing, 
why bother having two right uh, so in terms of you know what uh, what are some of the, some of the consequences of multicollinearity uh, number one is in terms of uh, the x1 and x2 uh, explain why right so if x1 and x2 can explain why then hey you know what few things that's going to happen is r square which is a uh, coefficient of determination right if you go from the previous ones you will see is rss or which is the total sum of squares right this is what it is r square t um some of squared errors or RSS over TSS, right? So what it really tells you is how much are they explaining why? So higher the explanatory power, higher the R square, right? And if you have the higher R square, generally what you do, F stat is also high, right? So it means it to actually have a lot of explanatory power of Y. Uh, let's say for some reason, you know what? Uh, if the T stat, of the b1 or b2 is low right if the t stat between b1 or b2 is low uh then the relationship between y and each individual x would be weak right if t stat is low what it means you have the null over here so you fail to reject null you reject the null hypothesis you reject the null hypothesis right so if the t stat is low which means it's going to fall over here uh, and which means the b1 and b2 will have a very low explanatory power if they have low explanatory power which means that you know what they don't really tell you anything so in terms of what is the uh how are, you, how are we going to remove multicollinearity? The simplest way is if we have B0 plus B1, X1 plus B2, X2 plus B3, X3 plus whatever it is, plus zero term. So the easiest way it really is if X1 and X2 are really correlated, we remove X2 or we remove X1. We keep only one of them. If X2 and X3 are highly correlated, then we drop one of them, right? So what it really means... Uh, if you want to go and solve the issue of multicollinearity, which is x1, x2, or x3, if they are highly correlated, then you can drop whichever one is highly correlated. Because at the end of the day, if one is moving the same amount or is reflecting the same amount, then why bother having two if one of them can actually explain you everything? So there's it, guys. Uh, we talked about uh, multicollinearity. Any questions, do let me know. Uh, if you do like the video, do like and subscribe. A uh, lot more videos coming your way.